Right, hello again. Um, this is video number two. I'm hoping this should be a bit shorter than the last one because uh, assuming you've done a bit of practice and maybe you started with that Hegarty task where you have to uh, do a bit of practice actually drawing a stem and leaf diagram, once you're quite happy with how you draw them, um, interpreting them I think is, is then qu uh, quite a bit easier. So um, I'm now going to look at task 430 which is stem and leaf diagrams one, where they actually just give you a stem and leaf diagram already drawn, and they ask, they ask some questions. Um, I might not even really need to write anything for some of them, because uh, I will just be able to answer it on the screen. Okay, so uh, here's a stem and leaf diagram. Uh, it, it, it's come pre-drawn, which is nice. So one thing to point out is, the num the, when you're given a stem and leaf diagram, the numbers are already in order, so this um, this lets this like lets you work things out a bit faster than if the numbers were all jumbled up and all written just on one straight line. Uh, anyway, so what have we got? Um, it's showing the times it takes all the people in an office to finish a crossword, and we've got one six, so one and a nine, or one and a nine, etc. Now, actually, before I've read the key. I don't, I don't actually know what these numbers are representing, do I? I can guess, I can guess it probably is in minutes, and as you can see, it's in minutes, right? So a three and then a seven means 37, it means 37 minutes. So let's just clarify, um, just because for, the, for our first question, I don't see any harm in just doing, doing a, a little bit more detail, is in this question, we really have the numbers 16, 19, 19, remember, look, this is not a, just a 6 by itself. This is not just a 9 by itself or just a 9 by itself. It's really 16, 19, 19, 23, 32, 37, 41, 43, 44, 46, 49. Okay, so we had the fastest person in the office only take 16 minutes to do their crossword. The slowest person takes 49 minutes. And I. And the, the question just says, how many people are there in the office? Uh, and, you know, before anyone wants to say maybe it's not everyone did the crossword, it says all the people in an office, right? All the people in an office. So it's, uh, what is it? Four, eight, 11 people. And I can actually answer this question without having drawn, uh, without having written any of this down. If you, if you take a look, you can actually just count these digits here. There's a 16, a 19, a 19, but really I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There were 11 people. Uh, how many people took more than 25 minutes? So in this situation, we need to first of all remember that more than 25 would not include 25. So it would be 26 and above. And you're basically looking at your stem and leaf diagram at all, at all the numbers that are 26 and above. So let's have a look. Well, this 12 isn't, this 18 isn't, this 22 and this 24 and this 25 aren't. But the 27, the 34, the 35, the 39, the 40, the 40, the 41, the 48 and the 49 all are. So I just need to identify whereabouts I'm looking. Now I'm looking at around 25. So I go to the 20, which is the two in the tens column of the stem. And I look to see the first number that's six or more, right? Well, that's this seven. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there were nine people who took more than 25 minutes. When it's asking for a range, that's a that's a mathematical sort of that's a mathematical word that has a specific meaning, right? It's the biggest number take away the smallest number in a set of numbers. So our set of numbers isn't six up to nine. It isn't one up to nine. These are all common mistakes that people have when they're not fully understanding the stem and leaf diagram. You need to interpret the stem and leaf diagram like what we do over here. We have 16, 19, 19, 23, 32, 37, 41, 
I mean, they are the same numbers. But even if I hadn't written them out here, when it's wanting the range, I will do 49, the biggest number, take away 16, the smallest number. And these things are always kind of in an obvious place to look, right? The largest number will be at the bottom right, and the smallest number will be at the top left. So we've got 16 to 49. Of course, that means the range is 33. Uh, and now we're just, we're, this is actually asking some fairly basic questions now, so long as you are happy with a stem and leaf diagram. So if you're not, I would obviously, um, I would recommend watching the previous video again, if ne if necessary, or, or asking for some more help. Uh, or you could you could try the Hegarty video um, associated with uh, Task 431, because uh, Mr. Hegarty might explain it as well. But uh, really, as long as you're happy, um, with what these numbers mean. I mean, this is really 10, 10, 11, 12, 14, 17, 18, 24, 29, 32, 36, 37, 38, 41. It wants to know what the mode is. So I don't need to write all these numbers down. I can just look and see, oh, there are two zeros here, which really are meaning tens, uh, like a 10, like literally one zero, one zero, ten, ten. 10. So the, the mode isn't zero, the mode is 10, because it was a 110 and no units, 110 and no units. So the mode is 10. Uh, and I, I, to be honest with you, I might now um, stop this task and just go on to stem and leaf diagram three, because at this point, this is just asking, this is just asking sort of no, totally normal questions to do with um, a set of numbers. So, so, you know, if you've forgotten how to work out the mean, remember you're gonna add them all up and divide by how many there are. Just, to, just again, just to point out, a really common silly mistake would be that you would do nine, add one, add one, add two, add two, add three, add three, add eight, add one, add eight, add eight, add eight, add zero, add three, add nine, but that would be wrong. You need to do 19, add 21, add 21, add 22, you need to make sure you're fully interpreting these correctly. Um, so let's just see if I can just quickly do this. Uh, there you go. So we have the calculator on the screen now. Uh, there we go. If I'd been more prepared for this video, clearly I would have already had that set up, but never mind. So what are we going to do? We're going to do 19, add 21, add 21, add 22, add 22, add, and there are some faster things I can do, right? Instead of writing 23, add 23, I could just write add 23 times 2, add 28, add 31, add 38 times 3, because a bid mass, it'll do the, those multiplications first and then add everything up. Add 40, add 43, add 49. So the numbers all add up to 456. And let's see how many there are, because it might have changed. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, there are 15 people in this office. So I'll divide that by 15, press the SD button, uh, round it to one decimal place is already 30.4. And so there you go. Um, I will show you how to do the median as well, because it's quite a nice thing to do with a stem and leaf diagram is find the median. Uh, so let me just make a quick copy of this stem and leaf diagram. So it was one, two, three, four. Uh, so what questions? This is question six. Um, and it's asking for the median. Zero, one, five, seven, one, three, seven, a six, and then a zero, one, one, three, eight. Now I'll just point out if what I'm about to show you, if you don't, if you don't like it that much. 
what you could do, what, what people sometimes just like to do is write the numbers out. 10, 11, 15, 17, and, and you could keep going to 48. And if you'd written them all down, now you can work out the median. But, but watch, there's something I can actually do just with the stem and leaf diagram. I would cross off 48 and, and 10. I would cross off 43 and 11. I would cross off 41 and 15, 41 and 17, 40 and 21, 36 and 23, and ah, there's my median. My median isn't 7, my median is 27. Right, and, now, and so at this point I am just going to sort of say, uh, I'm literally leaving the rest as an exercise, so that's that. And then on stem and leaf diagrams three, uh, we have back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagrams. So this is where we're comparing two sets of data and we're actually gluing two stem and leaf diagrams together. So let's have a look at the quiz for this. Um, now I'm not going to say too much about back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagrams because because Unless I get a you know a comment or an email or a question from someone who really wants me to explain back to back stem and leaf diagrams in more detail, I'm going to just say, look, <clears throat> if you um, well, first of all, let's read the questions. The back to back stem and leaf diagram. So why is it back to back? Well, because there's two things, and uh, it shows the percentage scores of boys and girls in a class for a German test. So let's just let's just first of all let's focus on the boys um, because they've been put on the right hand side here, which is kind of the normal way round for a stem and leaf diagram. It's just by itself. So a three and then a five means thirty five percent for this boy. So that thirty five is really one student score. This forty two percent is another student score. Fifty one percent, fifty three percent, fifty nine percent, etc., etc. OK, now, how does the scores work for the girls? Well, the stem is always just the stem. The stem doesn't change. The stem is the stem. The leaves going out one way and the leaves going out the other way still work the same way. So this three is really a 30 for the boys and also for the girls. And it's been drawn backwards because it's on the other side. So let's have a let, let I'll read out the girl's scores so that you can so that you can under, try to understand. Okay, so we've got a girl who got 31%, a girl who got 36%, a girl who got 43%, a girl who got 51, a girl who got 52, a girl who got 53, a girl who got 55. A girl who got 69, a girl who got 71, a girl who got 75, a girl who got 81, a girl who got 85, and a girl who got 94. So just because it's been written backwards doesn't matter. The stem is still the stem. The normal way round is the stem on the left and then the leaves on the right. But as soon as you have a back to back stem and leaf diagram, you flip it. For the other um, set of numbers, so that you 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 you're putting the numbers kind of in in a reverse order. So I'm I'm ho I'm really hopeful that makes that makes sense without me having to go into too much more detail. So anyway, what's the median for the boys? Well, we would cross off the 93 and the 92 and the 35 and the 42. We cross off the 75, the 74, and the 71, and we cross off the 51, the 53, and the 59. We cross off the 62 and we cross off the 65. And so we're left with two numbers in the middle, uh, 63 and 64. So halfway between that is 63.5. And that's how you do that. So just remember, if you've got if you want the median and it's two numbers in the middle, you have to go halfway. Um, oh, I've just realized the calculator is still on the screen. Let me just. Uh, which one is that? That one. So that's gone now. Uh, the median for the girls, so again, we, we, the smallest number for the girls is 38, and the largest is 95. Then it would be 91 and uh, 42. 
uh, 41. Um, no, sorry. See, you, you can make you can make very easy, silly mistakes here. Let's actually think about this more clearly. Uh, we've got, let me write them down actually for the girls. So we've got 38, 40, 41, 42. So that's a little mistake that I just made there. I, I was saying 42, 41, 40, which of course doesn't make any sense, does it? And then we've got 52, um, 63, 68, 68, 69. There isn't anything in the 70s. Then there's 84, 84, 91, 95. So these are the girls scores. Now, if you are struggling to see where these numbers have come from, um, please, please do let me know and I'll, and I'll try to do it in more detail in a, in, a, in a third video. Okay, but hopefully you can see where the 38, the 40, the 41, 42, et cetera, all came from. Now, in terms of then putting them in order, uh, well, it's already been done for us. And now, of course, I start crossing off and get the median is 68. And then, uh, is there a, so I wouldn't worry so much about comparing them in the comment box, uh, but what, what you could do is uh, basically, for example, if one of the medians is higher, right, that means that on, if it's certainly if it's on a test, that means on average that um, that set of students performed better. Um, that's, that's the sort of usual sort of thing, but also, if it was a race, say it was a race, then actually you'd want a lower time. So you must always keep it in context, right? You must always remember what it's about. The higher the number isn't always necessarily um, the better thing. Right. Um, hopefully all of that is okay. Hopefully I've explained I've explained semi-leaf diagrams um, reasonably well. Um, I, I did make a couple of silly mistakes as I was going along, but hopefully I uh, I, I picked up on those. Um, while I, while I was doing it. If you do notice any mistakes or you do have any questions or, or anything like that, uh, please either leave a comment or, or send me an email. Uh, please also leave a like and um, yeah, if there are any other topics that you would like me to do anything on, uh, it is easier if I have a specific Hegarty task to talk about because then at least um, it gives me a bit of focus and direction on the sort of maths I need to explain. Um, but yes, other than that, I hope everyone's all right. And uh, yeah, thank you.